And I think she would get a little upset. She'd be like, why did you keep this a secret? Just let me stew in my bitterness and peace. Some things are hard to forget or forgive. Okay. Oh my gosh. All right. So we are on part 28 of Cry Baby Wimps. Luckily, before playing today, I did just finish editing part 27. So I had a pretty good recap of where we were up to. And we are essentially focusing fully on Blossom now. You'll notice that Blossom is looking a little different. I did give her a makeover. So some time has passed since the last time we played. The reason for that was because we left not really knowing what we wanted to do about Mabel's pregnancy, but I really think it's important that we switch over to focus on Blossom now. And so I didn't want like Mabel's pregnancy storyline taking up too much more time in our game. So what I've done, I went ahead and played through Mabel's pregnancy. She gave birth to a daughter who's named Skylar. Her and Molly are living in a nice, it's kind of like a, a bachelor apartment, but it does have a separate bedroom. It's just, it's like a nook. It's not really like a room with a door. So they're living together. And interestingly, after Mabel gave birth, Timothy actually came to help Mabel with the baby and he was very excited about the new child, the new grandchild, his first grandchild, I guess. And he helped out a ton. He stayed on their couch and he cleaned and he cooked and he took care of the baby. So I thought that was quite sweet and I thought it was quite surprising because, you know, Timothy's not really like soft, I guess. Um, but yeah, let's go to high school with Blossom. So now that we're fully focused on her, and Mabel has had her child, I would imagine that like a year potentially has passed where Blossom has had the secret of knowing that Andy is her father. So that's why I changed her look. I wanted to make her look a little bit more mature because she was very young when she found out and she'd be a bit older now. In my head, she's been kind of mostly avoiding her mom, but I do have a plan on what it is that we are going to do for her to start getting answers to some of the questions that I'm sure she has. Now, oh, Blossom is off to go do some cheer, which is interesting. Are we on the cheerleading team? I don't think we are. Oh, she is attracted to Daichi. Daichi was the sim that we made over last time that she feels strongly connected to. I did reinstall Wonderful Whims in the game. I do prefer Wonderful Whims attractiveness system to the relationship and pregnancy overhaul. It's bigger, I think. And it looks like we're already starting to to be attracted to some sim. It's Daichi that she finds attractive, extremely attractive. So that's interesting. So she's been using S Social Bunny quite a bit. It looks like she's actually using it autonomously as well. Lunch is truly the best part of the day. And then maybe we can add a few new friends because we've met a few more people. So we've met Annabelle, Bria, and Trevor. Everybody is heading back, I guess, to the main classroom. <gasps> oh no, is our custodian dying? Oh, Grim is at the school. Can we plead? Let's plead. Oh, we can demand. Let's do that. Demand tie be spared. <laughs> We're doing this for our custodian. He always makes sure to mop up the puddles around our locker. <laughs> Grim does not look impressed. I'm not, con I don't think he's convinced by our argument. Yeah, look at that hand wave. I don't think that it worked. Looming death from fear of death. That dreadful feeling looms over Blossom as she discovers something new about herself. A fear that wasn't there before growing inside. Ready to overcome Blossom into paralysis at any moment. <gasps> It seems like she's really been quite traumatized by this death and maybe also the fact that we tried to plead and it didn't work. She's just come over here and gone to class. She's like, I don't want to have any part in this anymore. <laughs> We're going to be able to take a little bit of time to focus on some of these fears for Blossom because it actually is Winterfest Eve and tomorrow is Winterfest, which is a holiday. And I believe after that it is, well, it'll be the weekend, but I think it's also New Year's Eve, which is a holiday as well. For her holiday, Ashton and Willow have decided to go to a on a nice tropical vacation for Winterfest. Blossom did not want to join them. Her and Mabel kind of worked together and decided to take a vacation with each other and invite their dad, Timothy, along. And they're going to go to a nice cabin and have a nice quiet winter fest together with the baby, especially since Timothy is loving his grandchild so much. I thought it would be really nice if they all celebrate together. That is kind of what we have planned as our winter fest. We're going to be leaving tonight and we're going to head there with everyone. And I think it will be a good opportunity for Blossom to potentially confront Timothy with what she knows. And I think Mabel's kind of helping her out a bit because Mabel is still the one person that knows Blossom's secret. 
I'm going to take us home because we need to get ready and head off to the lodge. I think it's probably a little bit of a drive. So Willow is home from work. That is great. Now you'll see here. Yeah. So we've got three suitcases packed. We have Willow's suitcase, Ashton's suitcase, and this one is Blossom. I don't know exactly what time Willow's and Ashton's flights are at, but I'm going to go ahead and give them their suitcases. Of course, we're going to have to be the ones that plan it. So let's pretend that it's Mabel that's planning it, but I'm going to have to go ahead and plan the vacation. Oh, are we going to be able to take the baby? Because I don't think we know the baby. Okay, hang on. Let's, let's go to Mabel's house and um, we're going to meet the baby so that we can bring her with us. Here we are. Let's go knock on the door. I also can give you a tour of the apartment, which I did decorate for them. And actually, I think it's quite nice. Let me put the walls up and I'll give you a nice little tour of their cute apartment. I actually, I would love to live in an apartment like this. Like it's, it's a very much decorated to my taste, I think. It's just a little tiny entryway here. Very simple. And then the bathroom is here. It's actually quite a luxurious bathroom. And as we have to remember, Miley is quite wealthy. So I think she would have been able to, she's got, I think, really good taste and she would have decorated this apartment very nicely. So they've got this nice little kitchen here. I really like this dark kitchen. I don't tend to like dark kitchens, but I think it looks really good in this apartment. And I really like the lemons. <laughs> they have a bookcase. There is the baby. They have a little dining space here with a laptop. Miley is a teacher, so she does need a laptop for her job. Then they have a nice little sitting room here. It's very small and cozy, a tiny TV. They have candles. They have a yoga mat. They have a easel. They have all kinds of things and, and lots and lots of plants. I really like the lighting here at night. I worked very hard on making the lighting very nice because I think that's important in small spaces. There's a few photos here. Obviously, we can maybe take a nice big photo when we're on holiday for them. And then in here is the bedroom and you'll see that it's an art. So yeah, there's no door, but it is kind of like a separate space for the bedroom. They have a nice little sort of hanging area slash mirror here. They have a little bedside table. They do have blackout curtains because the baby does sleep with them in here. So this is the little nook where the baby sleeps. And then this is the wardrobe. And then here is the baby Skylar who we can meet. But I'm going to give you a little look at her. Oh, she's looking like who just walked in the door. <laughs> she is very sus. But look at her little pigtails. I think it's so cute. So let's come over here and ask to be introduced by Mabel. Could you please introduce me to your daughter? I'm sure that Blossom has actually met her before now. Look at Mabel's already such a natural mom. I love the apartment. Isn't it cute? I could totally see myself living in an apartment like this. It is so nice. There we go. This is our niece, I guess. That's a niece, right? Yeah. Let's head out to celebrate Winterfest. And this is going to be, look, we're, we don't know Miley that well. So this will be a good chance to get to know her too. But the main goal that Miley and Blossom are secretly planning is for them to tell Timothy, look, he's back there. Look, he's already there waiting for them. Is for Blossom to tell Timothy, Timothy that she knows the truth. And she's going to want him to say to her, you know, that he's not actually her father. So we've got this little forest hideaway in Granite Falls. It's a nice cabin. I made sure that there's a crib in there for the baby. So I think we're, we're going to put for three days, but we're probably going to come home, I think, after two. I just don't want it to end the vacation like before we're ready to go home. So this is the cabin that we're staying in. It's got a lot of actually outdoor activities that you can see, but it also has this nice little living area. There's a don't wake the llama game. I didn't get a tree that we need to decorate because I thought it would take too much time, but I did put some presents piles. And as you can see, there's stuff already for the baby down here. And out here, there's actually quite a nice patio, but we probably can't use it. But then there is a fire pit here. And then you can see there's like the frozen lake behind us. And then upstairs, there's two bedrooms and a bathroom. And then this is Blossom's room and also where Skylar will sleep. So I put a little crib in. It used to be two beds, but I, I switched out one bed for a crib. So it's a very cute A-line cabin. And I think they'll have a nice cozy holiday here. I'm going to make sure that we put Skylar down there because I'm just worried that otherwise we would like leave her out in the snow. So everyone has a place to sleep and we can make sure that we drop our presents off. Oh my gosh, Miley is already sneaking a present. <laughs> Miley, that's so rude. <laughs> there we go. Oh my gosh, Miley keeps sneaking presents. Oh, and she has an audition in an hour. Oh yeah, 
Actually, I think we did. We quit her job as a teacher, and I, I made her start the actress career. I'm not really too sure why. I think she had, like, a few skills in acting or something. So I had her switch careers. Now, we are hungry, so I think we're going to cook something with Timothy. Let's just make some mac and cheese. I don't think either Blossom or Timothy are very good cooks, so they would just make something simple, I think. Look at these two. They're trying so hard to cook. Hey, Timothy's actually not too bad. I think he did get better at cooking the summer that we spent with him. Blossom definitely needs to work on that cooking skill, I think. But they did get a nice sentiment together from cooking, it looks like. So there's some mac and cheese for everyone to eat that wants it. Somebody already made some coffee. I guess we're the only ones that are hungry. Presents tomorrow from anticipating. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Ask about life memories and milestones. Let's ask that. Maybe we can do like a little bit of a trip down memory lane because Timothy is our father at the end of the day. Like he did raise us. You want to know about my memorable events in my life? Since we're close, I have no problem telling you everything that's happened. Got a job, had children, had grandchildren, wooed with someone new, had a perfect reputation, took a vacation in another region and made a best friend. This is also a mod, by the way, where they can now share their memories with each other. Let's watch a little bit of TV together. And then I think a Blossom's going to head to bed. The snowflakes kind of have a bit of a glow to them, which is very cute. So the reason I'm making her nap is actually because this is a home remedy for when you're sick. Yeah, see, look, she's feeling better now. Yeah, combating a cold from home remedies. Sometimes simple home remedies are the best cures, are, are the best medicines. Let's go get ready for the day. We are pretty excited. Oh, something's nasty. Oh, no, the baby has a stinky diaper. <laughs> We could help and change the baby, but I don't think I don't think Blossom's going to. Let's come downstairs. Everyone's having mac and cheese for breakfast. I guess we'll go ahead and have it too. Why don't we give them a vacuum cleaner? There we go. That's a good gift. We don't need one right now because I'm pretty sure there is a vacuum somewhere in our penthouse. Oh my gosh, she didn't like it. She's probably like, are you trying to tell me something? Did you think that there was something wrong with our apartment when you were there? <laughs> Oh, Miley definitely took that the wrong way. Whoopsies. I'm just going to go ahead and add them to a group. Maybe we can go and build a snow plow pal together. Miley and Mabel probably want to take some time to rest and, you know, sleep in and stuff like that. So we're going to leave them the cabin and we're going to go spend a little bit of one-on-one -on -one time together, which is, of course, a little bit a part of our plan. And Blossom is going to try to find a way to bring up to Timothy what she knows. Oh my gosh, that snowman is so cute. I don't know if we can explore the woods together, but there are other lots that we can visit. So I'm just going to do a quick save and then let's um, let's see where else we can go. All right, so we're going to kind of like the National Park and, and maybe we can hang out here with Timothy a little bit and see if there's anything that we can do. Maybe we can talk a little bit while we're doing this. So I think I read somewhere that men tend to be better at having like deep conversations when you're side to side versus like facing each other. So maybe by sort of having an activity to focus on, oh my gosh, see, look, she's trying to have a deep conversation with him and he just got angry there. She might have already just brought it up. I'm not too sure because he got angry there for a second or maybe he has a feeling that it's coming. Let's let's just ask if he has kids. Obviously, we know that he does. I He just said, I have four children. She's not his biological kid. And because I had to fix the game, I don't have like all of the memories of him accepting Blossom and everything like that. He does only have four kids. I don't think she's, she said anything directly to him, but she's like, tell me really, how many kids do you have? Just be honest with me. And he's like, yes, I am a parent. I have four children. And so I think that's when she would maybe say, I found out that I'm actually not your biological child. Why? And I think she would get a little upset. She'd be like, why did you and mom keep this from me? Why did you keep this a secret? Just let me stew in my bitterness and peace. Some things are hard to forget or forgive. Okay. Oh my gosh. That was kind of an interesting response. Look at how angry he is. So I don't know that like this is necessary. Maybe Timothy was not the right person to confront. Look, Blossom's like, oops, this was a bad idea. I'm sure he still has some hard feelings from being cheated on. That could also be partially why he has a little bit of a grudge and he knows not to blame her. But with her bringing up all of this and saying you like being upset and you and mom should have told me and stuff, he's probably feeling like maybe she's ungrateful for the fact that he still accepted her 
which is not the right way to go about this. Like, that's not what she's saying at all. It can be two separate things where she is grateful for him being a true father to her. But at the same time, she's resentful that they didn't tell her the truth. With Timothy, because I think he's a little bit emotionally immature, as we know, and he processes things maybe not always in the best way. I think he's put those things together and he's just saying, well, clearly, if you're upset, you're ungrateful. And that's that's not at all what Blossom is trying to say. Yeah, like, look, he's storming off and Blossom's gone off in the other direction. And she won the horseshoe champion. You know, maybe Timothy's competitive side, too, is feeling a little bitter on top of everything. All right, let's put that in our inventory and then we're going to head back to the lodge. Timothy already headed back. Oh, my gosh. Timothy's already back at the lodge. He left without us. Timothy probably is just going to take, he might need to take the day to process it. And I'll bet you by tomorrow, he will have kind of thought about it a little bit and maybe calm down a little bit from his anger and be willing to talk about things a little bit more. So this might be a little bit of an awkward Christmas, but hopefully we can kind of talk things out before the holiday ends. But I don't know, like it's a tough situation. I don't know what I would do if I was in Timothy's shoes. It's one thing to be cheated on, but it is a whole other thing when it's like an ex that they cheat with. And then on top of that, you have a family and then they also become pregnant. Like you can't really blame Timothy for being upset. But also, I think he does. He does need to think about things from Blossom's perspective a little bit. She is the one that was also affected by all of that. It's not her fault. She didn't choose to be born into the situation she was born into. Yeah, see, look, he's like laughing and stuff with Mabel. Mabel's probably his favorite right now because I think he's had a lot of fun like getting to be the grandparent to, and he's been a lot more involved in Skylar than Willow has clearly because like Blossom barely knows Skylar too. So let's all go and open presents together. Miley is gone. I think Miley did have an audition, but um, you know, she did sneak her presents too. So it could be that there's no presents left for her anyways. All right. What did Timothy get? Is he happy with it? <laughs> no, look at that. He's not happy. He's so upset. He just threw the present aside. Maybe it's whatever Blossom got him and he's he's crying now. It was such a horrible gift. What did we get? Blossom got Shelly's shells towel ring. She will treasure it. Man, what did Timothy got that was so bad? It couldn't have been worse than a towel ring. Blossom doesn't need a towel ring right now. <laughs> Aw, Skylar's asleep on the floor. Can we give Skylar a nap? Can we like hold her while she's napping? What do we think? Do we think that Blossom is going to be able to like repair the rift now that's between her and Timothy? Father Winter is here already, so we better go get our gift from him as well. Oh, he came out to see Timothy. Maybe, maybe Father Winter is like, why now? Why would you be out here on your own on the most wonderful night of the year? And he's like, oh, Father Winter, don't get started with me. All right, let's see. Hopefully we get a better gift than a towel rack. <laughs> Father Winter got Blossom a brand spanking new gift. One Crispinix Ultra Gate Great with Deluxe Crisper. I think that's a fridge. Which, yeah, that's like a pretty great gift. It's pretty expensive. Okay, well, you know what? I guess Timothy wants to be left alone, which is fine. We had a pretty good Winterfest anyways. We did almost everything on the list. And now it is New Year's Eve. <laughs> She's uh, so excited. She's announcing it. But let's go ahead and start by making a resolution since she's kind of out on her own and thinking about stuff. And then let's go back home and see if we can serve some true breakfast now. Maybe we can try and warm things up with Timothy. Oh, Timothy made some bison stew. Oh, he doesn't want our breakfast. Oh, didn't he do this with Willow too? Like Willow would have cooked something nice and then Timothy would just go ahead and like eat something else anyways because he didn't want to have her food when he was mad at her. Now he's doing that with Blossom. Oh my gosh, that's so petty. Well, he's not completely ignoring us. Oh, what does that mean though? <laughs> Why has he got like a an X over our face? <laughs> Maybe he's just got a lot of feelings right now and he doesn't exactly know what to do with them, which is a, a little bit of a Ken situation. I think he's Kenning a little bit right now with all his feelings. Oh, we're going to ask him what happened. Why is the baby just asleep on the bathroom floor? Okay, I'm just going to put that up because I don't like seeing the baby on the floor. Out of sight, out of mind, you know? Willow wants to be added to your contact list. I guess she's missing us because she's on vacation without us. I'll bet you that Timothy maybe texted Willow. I'm sure they talk when it comes to kids and he's like, by the way, Blossom seems to know about Andy. Like, did you know this? That might be why Willow is following us all of a sudden on Social Bunny because she probably wants to know what's going on and if 
Blossom is saying anything uh, on her socials about, you know, her parenting and stuff. Let's tell some stories, like remembering the year that we've had. There we go. We'll tell a funny story. This is quite a story that she's telling. What are you drinking? Juice on the rocks. Nice. <laughs> Miley's going straight for the hard stuff. <laughs> Where, what did we do with that wine glass? Did we just put it in our pocket? I want to see her tell this story because I know that you usually get like really cool stuff, animations and stuff. Miley's got to sit down for this. Should we turn off the lights? So there was once a princess and she had magic powers. But in this kingdom, magic powers were actually banned. So she had to hide them. One day she met a toad <laughs> and her magic powers transformed him into a knight who was able to help her pass laws of justice so that magical beings were no longer banned from the land. But then she ended up becoming evil and started turning all her people into pigs. The end. She didn't look like that was a good story. So she, she looked a little unsure. I hope you enjoyed my tale. Messed up ending. Wow, that was terrible. And ending this bad shouldn't have started in the first place. It was a pretty bad ending with the story I did. All right, we're about to have a deep conversation with Timothy. She's going to apologize for how she brought up the news. Maybe that wasn't the best way to break it to you. I just, I feel betrayed by both of you, but I, I have a little bit more understanding towards you than I do to mom because this was her secret. You know, you were playing along, but you've always been a great dad. And maybe we'll discuss fears of how she feels like if she's to share the truth, like she wants to learn more about her family, but she is afraid that, you know, when she starts sharing with people that she will be less accepted in the family. I think she would share that fear with Timothy and Timothy might have a little bit more sympathy for Blossom. She's still feeling bad, though, about that story. Sorry, Blossom. <laughs> Let's take a photo with Timothy. She does see everything he's done for her, and she does appreciate him as her dad. And she she has anxieties, too, around the secret and about, you know, it coming to light now. But she also, I think, it's really important for her to find out the truth. Like, you know, it's understandable. You would want to know. There we go. She's like, you're still my dad, though, no matter what. You are the one that raised me. So anyways, I think they're okay. And he's like, I still raised you since you were a baby and you're still my baby. So I think that's what he just said to her. You don't have to tell the rest of the family if you don't want to. Of course, like you you have questions and I get it. But, you know, this is this can still be a secret if you want it to be. I did tell mom that, you know, so let's not rush anything. Let's figure out what to do next. I don't think Timothy really wants the secret to be out, to be honest. All right, I'm going to send Blossom for a little nap, and then we're going to wrap up our New Year's Eve. We're going to watch the countdown, and then we're going to hopefully be able to hug everyone, including Timothy. Maybe we can make another meal with Timothy. Hey, look at this fridge. It's got, like, tech on it. <laughs> I never noticed that. Whoa, look at Timothy. Timothy really has gone to be a good cook now that he doesn't rely on Willow anymore for his meals. He's gone really good. I think he's like, he's making fresh bread for these BLTs right now. He's hand kneading and baking and slicing up the bread so that they can have gourmet BLTs. Let's make sure we're watching. Maybe we can chat with Miley a little bit. Where is the baby, by the way? Maybe she's like, actually, someone actually put her in her crib. Yes, nice. Okay, good. It's nice to see that she's like sleeping in her crib for once. This poor baby. <laughs> I know, right? I'm like, where is she? The bathroom floor. They're all getting ready. We need to get a little closer. Here we go. Just shooby. Just shooby. <laughs> just shooby. I like how every number is the same word. All numbers are shashubi. Oh, there it was. Okay, let's see here. What does everybody do? They hug, which makes sense because they're best friends. So, of course, they would hug first. But I feel like Miley... And um, Mabel would kiss. Yeah, there we go. Now, what I want to see is if she ends up kissing, uh, sorry, hugging Timothy. And it looks like she doesn't. You make my day so much better. Thanks for making me smile. Oh, well, no matter what, Mabel knows the truth. And we always have our close relationship with Mabel. There we go. Yeah, these two. Oh, look at how pretty it is with the snow outside and the lanterns in the tree. Oh, it's so nice. Can we take a photo together? There we go. They're so cute. So we got some photos together with Mabel. Now let's head off to bed. 
It seems like Timothy is, doesn't really want to put the information too much out there with the rest of the family. I think he is letting it be Blossom's choice, whether or not they end up telling the rest of the family. We're kind of going to have to see how this ends up affecting their relationship long term. I don't think Timothy handled it the best, but we know Timothy is not sort of the most um, the best with his emotions. So I think it's going to take him some time to process it. But what will be interesting is now Willow knows we know, and I could see Mabel being quite upset with Willow. I think Timothy, in a way, she's a bit more understanding because it was Willow's mistake and it was Willow's situation and Willow's affair. And so Timothy, in a way, is like kind of almost a victim in all of that. And so I think Blossom can see that. So I don't know. She might be quite frustrated with Willow. So... We'll see what that's like when we get home. We will head home in the next part. Thank you everyone for hanging out and I will leave it there. I am on your side.